So in this video, I'm going to give you five mini projects, which are part of a larger project that will teach you Python. It'll improve your, your programming skills, but it'll actually also build you something that is really useful. What are the two most important considerations for anybody making YouTube videos? I don't know. They are title and thumbnail. Oh, gee, God. <laughs> I nearly lost the camera then, trying to do my whip pan. Uh, so we're going to make something that can download data from YouTube and then show the title, view count, and thumbnail. You know what, it's just gonna be easier if I show you. So here we have data from Jack Edwards' channel, which is really good, you should go and check it out if you like books. And you can see here, we have videos and then the thumbnail comes up. So you can immediately see which videos have done the best, you can look at the titles, and, you know, and simultaneously, you can see the thumbnail. So that's what this code will do for you. And I've got this drop down menu here, and we can look at other channels as well. I don't know if there's anything in particular that we want to have a look at. Uh, Max Fosh. So here we can instantly see when his video started to do very well. And you can see the, the growth here. And also you can see the title, the views and the thumbnail as you go and hover over these videos here. So it's a really useful tool. Right, so now I'm gonna show you the five mini projects, the five steps involved to make this larger project work. So step number one, the first thing you have to do is set up an account with Google Cloud Services and make sure that you can interact with the YouTube API. Mini project number two is reading the documentation for the, the YouTube API and working out how you can interact with that API so that you can download the data from YouTube that you want. The title, you're gonna want the number of views, you're gonna want the thumbnail, and any other bits of information. I thought you might like to know that this is what my code looks like for this section. Here it is. This is probably the most difficult mini project. You're gonna want something that can download that data and save it to a JSON file. Number three, mini project number three, once that data has been saved to a JSON file, you're gonna to want to read it into a pandas uh, data frame so that you can then start doing analysis on it and plotting it and all that kind of thing. The data won't be saved in the most convenient way to access in a data frame. Look at it, it's horrible. Try to figure out how best to load it in so the, into the data frame so that you can get something that looks a bit like this. Now mini project number four is, is the fun bit because you get to start uh, visualizing the data. Now I started doing this using Plotly but I found that with Plotly I couldn't load the thumbnail in and in the end I had to use Dash in order to get the thumbnail to display. Now mini project number five is entirely up to you. So there is no mini project number five. I'm not gonna tell you what to do for that. But there's a, there's a lot that you could do with this. So once you've got to this point, you'll, you're sort of quite familiar with what, you know, the project so far and what it's taken to get here. I think there's a lot of stuff that you could do. There's a lot of potential for moving this forward. It is likely that you will need help with this project. And my advice on that would be to start by going to the usual places. So do Google searches, Stack Overflow, read the documentation so that you can get an understanding of the problem and the things that you don't uh, quite follow. But what changes things now for beginners is your access to ChatGPT. And ChatGPT can be your mentor with this. So if you're not quite sure how to proceed, ask ChatGPT to write the code snippets for you. And you can break the project down into smaller sections and then you can have a conversation and a dialogue with ChatGPT. Now the code that ChatGPT produces isn't gonna be perfect. If you want to learn to code or delve into computer science, then take a look at brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. You learn by doing and Brilliant's platform is built around that concept Brilliant offers thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math, computer science, AI, and data science, with new content added monthly. They make learning challenging and fun, providing you with the tools to learn to think critically and solve complex problems. One course that I think you might be interested in is Computer Science Fundamentals. By the end of it, you'll have a thorough understanding of the core computer science concepts. 
Brilliant's visual hands-on approach makes building a daily learning habit easy, and interactive learning has been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning methods like watching video lectures. With Brilliant, it's really easy to get into the habit of learning by using the platform for just 30 minutes a day. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer, or just click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.